So are we three and a half minutes away? Scott? I lost Scott. Do you still, still see Scott, Michael? I'm sorry, what, Michael? <clears throat> Do you still, still see Scott? No, I don't. I, oh. I see the um, video being rolled of the eclipse. Yeah, Michael, Michael and Michael, you're, you're looking at uh, my uh, intro video and I'm going to start sharing this to some groups, uh, particularly okay. the eclipse groups on Facebook. So it takes a minute to do here. Okay. Great. I'm going to check something real quick. I'll be back in seconds. Sure. Yeah. Hello everyone, this is Scott Roberts from Explore Scientific and the Explore Alliance and welcome to our new show called Eclipse Experience. Our episode, our first episode is with Michael Zeiler and Michael Bakich, both of Great American Eclipse, um, uh, the guys that write these incredible uh, um, 
guides on eclipses. Uh, this particular one I've been using and studying up on for the 2023 annular and the 2024 total eclipse. They're incredibly detailed and everything. Uh, but we're going to talk about eclipses, um, you know, uh, the just kind of the experience itself and uh, why these two guys are so fanatical about eclipses themselves. Um, let me bring, uh, bring you guys on. Here we go. That's Michael Backage and Michael Zeiler. I'm going to let you guys take the stage. And I'll just be chatting kind of in the background here. But uh, uh, Michael Backich is uh, um, uh, coming in from his home in Arizona. And I think Michael Zeiler is right now in Hawaii. Is that right? That's right. I'm vacationing here. <laughs> That's awesome. OK. Well, great. Um, uh, you know, I'm I'm uh, uh, happy that you guys are participating again. You've been on some of our shows before. Both of you have. Yep. Uh, I was with Michael Backich um, during his uh, astronomy class in Starmus, Starmus in Yerevan, or not Yerevan, but in Armenia. And, um, you know, he did a fantastic job also acting as MC for Starmus. So, uh, Michael Backich, I've known for many years. Uh, Michael Zeiler, I've known for of him for a long time, but uh, we got a chance to talk at the Astronomical League convention uh, uh, in, um, Albuquerque. in Albuquerque. That's yeah. right. That's right. So, anyways, uh, it seems I know that from our side here, uh, we are rapidly trying to get. Um, uh, things like eclipse glasses and solar telescopes and all kinds of solar filter materials that we make. Um, but, uh, you know, there's a whole educational side to uh, the eclipse. And I kind of view eclipses, I've, I've, I've seen three of them, total eclipses. Uh, I kind of view them as a, an incredible way to get really interested, kind of this gateway towards astronomy and I see, I see astronomy as kind of this gateway to uh, greater right. scientific literacy and so um, when I look at what Great American Eclipse has done uh, you know I think that uh, you have uh, perhaps better than most um, and maybe the best uh, uh, you know uh, translator of what you know eclipses are uh, you know, when you start reading through the guides, you know, state by state, region by region of uh, where the eclipse is going to touch on land, uh, it's a whole uh, education in itself. And um, uh, so I think that you guys are doing an amazing job in educational outreach just with the books that you've written. Um, and, uh, you know, and you've written plenty. Uh, so um, I'm just I'm just holding up you know, one of the, one of the guides here. So, um, but, uh, it is my, it's my Bible <laughs> for, for the eclipse. So I'll let, uh, why don't you get started, uh, to talk about great American eclipse. Um, and, uh, okay. and then we'll, yeah, we'll get, uh, okay. Um, Scott, what, one thing I, I'd like to, to bring out at, at the beginning is, is that, um, the work that we're doing towards the eclipse, it's not directed towards, um, astronomy geeks is right. directed for everyone in the country anyone that can appreciate beauty and and I think that's that's an important uh, aspect of our outreach is that we always have to be conscious of, of reaching the broad audience instead of you know the people who are already our, our friends and, and peers in our cohort um, right. So, so that, that that's a very important aspect. But about um, our website, uh, Great American Eclipse, um, our mission is to educate the public and um, to help the public find their best location for the, the two coming eclipses. One way to think about um, the eclipse is the eclipse. Um, is really an alignment of the sun, moon, and you. And you are an important part of the equation because you have to make the conscious decision to find out where the optimum location for you uh, to see the eclipses. 
So you have to place yourself in that alignment and get the combination of circumstances that would really work for you. So the primary consideration, of course, being weather, but there's some other considerations such as eclipse durations and so forth. So that's what a um, great American eclipse is about is uh, providing comprehensive information um, about the coming eclipses. And for my, for myself, I'm a retired cartographer. So um, more than perhaps other astronomy or eclipse related websites, we have a heavy focus on, on eclipse maps because that, that, that's a core part of the work that we do. Mm -hmm. and, and it's also expressed through these two books that we're talking about, Scott. Great, great. So um, when, did, when did Great American Eclipse actually get formed? What was well, the genesis for that? The, the genesis, well, I've been an eclipse chaser for a long, long time since uh, 1991. Okay. But uh, there was a big eclipse coming up in 2009 at, that, that you recall in um, the Western Pacific and China, that region. And um, at that time, you know, I, I, I was a confirmed eclipse chaser, um, but I hadn't applied my profession to my personal interest yet. But I booked a cruise that was advertised to go to the point of greatest eclipse in the Western Pacific. And I wanted to keep the ship's captain honest. Hmm. The existing maps at that time didn't have the information that I needed to locate myself at sea, notably a latitude and longitude grid on the map. I so, see. so I, I made my own map um, and brought it on the ship with uh, over a thousand other eclipse chasers hmm. and taped it on the side of the, the ship on the upper deck. Uh, it drew a lot of interest and so people encouraged me to keep going. And uh, a few years later, uh, that led to the creation of GreatAmericanEclipse.com. Wow. Okay. All right. So uh, I would say that the uh, the marketing and the awareness that you guys are doing is is really second to none. Um, and um, so I, I'm, uh, yeah, I, to say the least, I'm impressed. You know. So. Um, uh, Michael Backich uh, gets started. Uh, how long ago did this collaboration start? With Michael, um, just before I retired in August 2019, he and I were on a phone call just chatting. And I said, so, you know, what's coming up? What are you doing? What's going on? Mm. He said, uh, well, I'm, I'm thinking of writing an eclipse atlas. I said, oh, that's cool. And there was this long pause. And I think he was flipping a coin. <laughs> <laughs> and finally he said, oh. <laughs> why don't you like to write the text? And I said, uh. that's great. You know, I, I, I'd love to. So that's, that's where the collaboration began. And um, uh, the book that you held up was the yeah. first one that we did. And then when that one came out, Michael said, I'm thinking of doing a, a deeper dive into the 2023 annular eclipse and the 2024 total eclipse that will pass across the United States. And so once again, we collaborated and we came out with this much thinner book. Um, the one that you held up, Scott, I like to think yeah. of as our travel guide uh, for people through the year 2045. Yeah. Because if you're thinking of going on vacation, look through that book. That's where you should go. Okay. Uh, you know, dial into a total solar eclipse and see the most majestic spectacle. And then, you know, tour the history and geography of the place that you're in. But if you want to take a, a critical look into the two U.S. eclipses, you know, this book is uh, more than adequate. I see. All right. And it just focuses on these next two upcoming eclipses. Uh, I know a lot of people are heading down to Hill Country in Texas. I am, you know, and uh, so it's going to be, uh, uh, you know, uh, a great place to, to be. Uh, I had to do some homework. You know, I looked at uh, uh, Eclipse. I think it was called Eclipse, Eclipsophile or something like that, where it showed weather patterns over the last 20 years um 
you know, it um, uh, is useful. There's lots of information there. Uh, but if you go to uh, greatamericaneclipse.com, it really, you really get down to the detail, you know, uh, page by page of, uh, of um, you know, where the eclipse is going, which cities it's going to hit, um, you know, and uh, information about the eclipse. So, uh, Mike, uh, are both of you writing the descriptive text about the eclipses themselves, or, um, you know, is this, a, is this a nice mix, or uh, 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 being that you're both called Michael, it's a yeah, little but, awkward uh, here, um, yeah, but... Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. all right. Um, uh, but uh, 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 Zyler, you you are uh, being that you're the map maker. Uh, are are you writing a lot of the descriptive text yourself as well, or? Uh, well, I, I of course I, I do a lot of the writing, you know, for our website and our other material. Yeah. But Michael Bakic is an experienced uh, senior editor from Astronomy yes. Magazine. So That's right. Uh, you know, he's he's taken the lead on the, the text for, for the two books and, and written nearly all, all of the text for the two books. Oh, and, okay. Yeah. All right. So that, yeah. and, and that's excellent. Is, you know, so it I, is, are, are the maps and, and the book layout because yeah, it's that's a nice, my professional experience. Nice combination. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, I have been talking to people and preparing for the show. You know, of course, I'm looking for other guests to be on Eclipse Experience. We plan to um, uh, have the show at least weekly and probably going every other day and maybe even daily at one point uh, as we prepare. But there's a lot, actually there's a lot to know um, about getting to an eclipse uh, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, when you see one for the first time, uh, I don't think anything really prepares you for mm -hmm. how you know, amazing it's going to be. It's it, um, words like amazing, incredible, life change. Those they don't really describe <laughs> what's going no. to happen. But I, I will tell you that the first time I saw a total eclipse, uh, I was on Mauna Kea, uh, right in front of the Canadian French Hawaii Telescope. We were part of a film crew. Um, and uh, when I saw it actually happen, I got this feeling of impending really something wrong, impending doom. I had this weird feeling in my stomach, like something was uh, horribly wrong. And, um, uh, you know, of course, I, you know, <laughs> I know that it's, it's, uh, you know, nothing bad was going to happen. But to see the sky go black, like not black, but this 360 degree kind of sunset, and to see the shadow overtake us and the shadow bands racing up the observatory walls and then watching professional astronomers uh, run out of the observatory with their jaws dropped, okay, <laughs> and forgetting what they were supposed to be doing, okay. Uh, yeah. So that, that uh, I think happens to a lot of people, um, you know, so... Uh, well, you know, what, what I, you said, Scott, you know, a minute ago is the key, and that is you cannot possibly really prepare yourself for the experience of, of seeing an eclipse. Yeah. Um, no matter no, no matter how well you understand the phenomena rationally and, and understand all the causes of phenomena, you will see it's still for even for a professional, it's an intensely emotional ex experience. Yes. Um, and, and you will always remember it as a peak life experience. It should be on everyone's bucket list. Right. Right. You know, the, and, and, you know, there are, there's amazing photography. I know both of you have seen, you know, this, uh, you know, the, the, you know, all, all the details that can possibly actually go beyond the visible mm -hmm. limit of yeah. uh, what you can see. Uh, they don't, and they're beautiful, but they don't, they, it's not the same as witnessing no. an eclipse. Right. So, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, the, the, there's so many phenomena that, that you'll see during the experience of, of the eclipse and, and not just during totality, but in, in the seconds before and after totality, the quality of light is breathtaking because mm -hmm. just a narrow shaft of sunlight is coming down on you and you see optical effects like scintillations in the sky and, and these shadow bands creeping around that, that you never see at any other time in your life. So it really mm -hmm. is a unique and interesting experience. Mm -hmm. 
Michael, you, you uh, uh, hosted the astrophotography uh, class at Starmus. H how would you, what would you say to people to get started uh, to prepare uh, for, because a lot mm -hmm. of us are going to want to photograph the eclipse. What, what should we do? Should we go buy a new camera? Should we, you know, just take our mobile phones out there? You know, wh what's, what's your advice? So if this is your first eclipse, my advice is don't. Don't photograph the eclipse. Just stand and enjoy your first one. Uh -huh. <clears throat> after that, you know, after that, if you choose to, um, here's the thing. You know, I was photo editor for Astronomy Magazine for almost 20 years. I, I've seen all the pictures. I've seen the great ones. I've seen the not so great. And I've seen many others too. Um, mm -hmm. The chance that a first time photographer is going to take a picture that's going to end up in the pages of a national or international magazine, <clears throat> slim to none. Um, people that have been doing this for many years really are keyed in to, to how to photograph eclipses. But, um, you know, and, and I, you know, I can use my own experience. The 2024 total solar eclipse that's coming up April 8th will be my 15th total eclipse. Wow. I was photo editor for the magazine. I've never taken a picture during the eclipse. I've taken a lot of pictures before, a lot of pictures after, but never have I ruined my experience by doing this and looking down when all the glory was up in the sky. I just, you know, um, you certainly can take quick pictures with cell phones. You know, yeah. That may be the way to do it. But again, a cell phone projects a, an image, you know, something like, three by four inches and if you look at it on the cell phone that's fine but if you try to blow it up or make a print out of it you're going to be really disappointed because they just don't take that great a picture unless you're viewing it on the cell phone so yeah you can take a memento like that but you know my my uh advice to and i've, I've spoken to thousands of people before eclipses and I've told them, don't photograph the eclipse. How many people have come back to me and said, ah, oh, I wish I would have photographed that. You know, I wish I would have kept. None. Zero. You know, really? They all said, thank you. You know, yeah. I, I was really glad that I was able to concentrate on the eclipse. Now, if this is not your first eclipse, and, you, and you know, you're bound and determined to take photographs or video of the eclipse, here's my advice. If anything, anything goes wrong, just stop what you're doing and watch. Okay? Right. If everything right. goes right, you may capture a, a really good picture or a really good video of the eclipse. But if you have to fool around with your camera or your video camera during the eclipse, during totality, yeah. just, just forget that. Wait till the next eclipse to, uh, to get your stuff together and, and just watch. Just experience all the the wonder that you both have talked about already. Yeah, yeah, well, I, I agree just... with, with Michael on, on his photography advice, but I, I'd like to suggest an idea, and that is that um, yes, it, it, it it's it's remote that you can, unless you're a professional photographer, um, there, there's a remote chance that that you could really get a good photo of the eclipse on your first try. But one thing that's even more that that's almost as interesting as the eclipse itself is the reaction of the people around you to the eclipse so one thing you can try um is and, and i've done this a couple of times myself is is set up a iphone or a gopro put it on a table or a tripod facing your group start at five minutes or so before the total eclipse and then just let that video run, and and it, it record your part, um, your eclipse viewing party, and I think you will right. find great hilarity and um, yeah. profound wisdom in the reaction <laughs> of the people during right. the eclipse. Agreed. I mean, I, I, you're right, absolutely, Michael. I've done that for probably the last twelve eclipses, and uh, again, you know, a bit of technical advice: if your camera auto corrects for darkness, turn that feature off. 
but uh, yeah, I mean, it's yeah. it is it is a lot of fun to go back and look at those. Do um, uh, have have both of you seen? I mean, every time I've done an eclipse, it's been uh, involved photography. You know. Uh, um, and I wish I could just stand back and watch one, you know, um, uh, you know, but, uh, I'm always like checking equipment and stuff like that. It's very, actually very distracting in a way, because this is, uh, as, as Michael Zeiler said, it is a very intense experience. Um, uh, I have, uh, I have some funny stories, you know, because, uh, uh, it, when I was in Casper, Wyoming, uh, uh, for the 2017 eclipse, uh, I, one of the funniest things that, that I experienced there was is that everybody was so afraid uh, uh, about damaging their eyes, okay, during the eclipse. I guess they think that during an eclipse that the sun has special laser powers or something and is going to overcome you and you are going to get blinded somehow by seeing uh, the sun uh, during the eclipse. Now, I do not recommend looking at the sun at any time, but the sun does not get more powerful uh, during the eclipse. Uh, you, there may be times where you can actually stare at it a bit longer than uh you know at the very final phases but even in its you know three quarters coverage and stuff it the sun is still so bright that you can't just sit there and stare at it i mean and, and, and unless somebody's got your eyes peeled open and yeah. <laughs> just holding your head there but uh, so the funny experience was is that there was this whole group, maybe, I don't know, 50 people, 60 people uh, with us, and they all have their eclipse glasses on, and they're all staring up at the sky, and now we're in totality, and I think that they're going to take the eclipse glasses off. Nope, okay. Uh, <laughs> I had to yell at them and tell them to take the eclipse glasses off so that they could see totality, you know, uh, and once they did, then there, you know, the oohs and ahs and, and all the rest of it were there. Mm -hmm. um, but they missed 10 seconds of the, of the eclipse. Yeah. And that's a big chunk to miss. Yeah. But the good news for them is that the 2024 eclipse is nearly twice as long as the 2017 eclipse. We're going to have over four minutes if you're well within the path of totality. Mm hmm. And uh, speaking of the path, you mentioned that you were going to be, you know, in, in the Texas hills. Yeah. Uh, the reason people probably will gravitate toward Texas, toward the southwest, two reasons. First of all, the, the duration of totality is longest there. At the Texas-Mexico border, it's 4 minutes and 27 seconds, only one second less than the maximum for the whole eclipse. And second, the weather is best there. You know, the, the path tracks from Texas all the way up through Maine. But the likelihood that somebody's going to see it, and, and we're talking climate here, you know, weather, yeah. weather is different. Weather can be, you know, totally clear in Maine, the whole state, for Eclipse Day. But the likelihood is that the best weather will be in Texas, and your likelihood of seeing the eclipse decreases as you move toward the Northeast. Yeah, yeah, and Although there's no guarantees people, about it. Yeah. For people who live in that part of the country, um, they still could get a pretty decent shot at seeing the eclipse if they're not in Texas, if they adopt a, a strategy of mobility. Right. Watching the, the weather like a hawk, you know, 48 hours in advance or so, and being willing to drive a couple of hundred miles to get to a clear spot. Um, again, the, the, the website that Scott mentioned earlier, Eclipsophile, Dot com is the key website for understanding um, the, the, the weather prospects. And I'd recommend everyone visit that website. Right. Yeah, and it seemed like they had very advanced uh, weather, weather tools there, or climate tools. Uh, yeah. But weird stuff happens during an yeah. eclipse, right? I mean, places that are supposed to be clear are now cloudy. Places that might have been predicted to be cloudy are now clear. Um, this is something I experienced uh, when I was on the Big Island. Um, uh, we were at um, we we're at fourteen thousand feet, uh, Mauna Kea, 
and the clouds came all the way up, all the way up to the lens level of our telescope, our, oh, our systems. Okay, it was like I could take my hand and waft it into thick cloud cover. Okay, <laughs> it wasn't quite like dry ice, but it was. It was starting to cover the lenses, and I knew that uh, you know, of course, moisture would cover the lens, and that would be bad, and and all the rest of it. But as the sun, uh, so the sun's rising, this cloud cloud deck is getting higher and higher. You know, it's coming up over the uh, the edge of the volcano, coming up to around our legs, coming up to the telescope uh, itself, uh, and, and these are. These are motion picture camera lenses that we were using, and we're shooting on 35 millimeter film. And it almost gets to where it's covering the lenses, and then the sun peeks out, and the cloud deck drops. Like, oh. So then we're like, oh my God, you know? Um, but uh, I know that people that were like in Kona, uh, they were expecting clear weather, and it clouds up for them. Uh, just. I think 20 miles away, it was clear, you know, so, uh, and then my next eclipse would have been to see an annular eclipse in California. And so I took people out to Catalina Island. This was a bad strategy on my part because I'm taking them to an island, okay? My friend Roger Ressmeyer stays on the mainland in California and um, he has uh, access to a meteorologist or something and knows that he has to start moving and so he gets in his car and they are blasting and they're going down i5 until they can get to a place where it looks relatively clear they jump out and they capture uh annularity which um uh that and so my whole group missed the whole thing you know um what do you suggest i mean it, this kind of contingency plan how do you build this in uh, so that you're m more likely if to get to a clear sky than than not. Well, part of it is uh, familiarity with with the local road network, and that's exactly what our field guide for the eclipses was designed for. It was designed for two purposes, really. One purpose was to select your best location for you to go to. And the second purpose is if uh, weather interferes on eclipse day or, or you can see it the day before, then you've got a really good reference right in the car with you um, that you can relocate yourself. Um, so, mm -hmm. you know, that's the, the knowledge and, and clear maps with, with solid information about how long the eclipse will be and so forth. Um, that that's, what, how we we help uh, eclipse chasers? Yeah, yeah. Right. You want to uh, you want to stay mobile. <clears throat> I mean, unless you're absolutely certain a couple of days before that your chosen location is going to be clear, you probably don't want to set up an entire camping site. You know that will take you three or four hours to close down and pack up right. and and get mobile again. And then um, Michael has always mentioned to me that you should always, as much as possible, keep a full tank of gas in your vehicle. Uh, that's a good that, idea. That, that can be really valuable. If you need to get somewhere, you don't have to stop, maybe get in some line where, you know, 20 other cars are before yeah, you. You're going to miss the eclipse if this happens. So. Um, uh, the uh, I would agree with all of that. I have heard people that uh, fly private planes and stuff like that, you know, where they fly into an area and then they drive out someplace and uh, thinking that the plane can get them, you know, uh, beyond the weather uh, if they have to. Um, but I can imagine it would be a real scramble. Okay, so you're talking about not really setting up, but this also involves maybe a complex telescope setup, okay? Uh, if it's a larger telescope, I would think, you know, I mean, I watch, of course, I've set up telescopes a million times, but uh, people that do this on an occasional basis, you know, have to take their time to get the telescope set up correctly. And, well, my question would be, why do you need a large telescope? You certainly don't need it for the, t uh, for the partial phases, yeah. because you're looking at the sun. 
and uh, you know it's it's pretty bright. So even a small telescope with a wide field will give you that. And secondly, a large telescope generally limits the field of view. So you want a good explore scientific telescope, <laughs> you know, that will well, give that you... a plug for my company. <laughs> no, uh, that, I don't work for Scott, so. Uh, but um, you want a telescope and an eyepiece combination that will give you at least a couple degree field of view because degrees, remember the, yeah. the sun is one half degree across. Yeah. But the corona can stretch out to several solar diameters on either side, so yeah. you want a nice low power view. And and it's also good to have binoculars, which Explore Scientific also sells. Uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So uh, I, I always use binoculars. I have used telescopes to view the eclipse, but my favorite way to view a total solar eclipse is binoculars. And I always have binoculars around my neck when I uh, when I go to one of the eclipses. So you got it, but but you would probably want to have solar filters on those eclipse, uh, those binoculars, right? Absolutely. So do you, Absolutely. Do you make your own, or how, how do you? How do you arrange for for uh, to? There are there are a number of companies that sell specific sized eclipse uh, filters for binoculars. Yeah. Uh, Daystar filters is one. You know where yes. you can buy filters. Um, yeah, and I I've also made my own. I've made solar filters for both telescopes and binoculars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, solar filters are uh, are key. Mm -hmm. So you don't bring a telescope, you'll bring binoculars. Um, do you, and you mentioned that you haven't photographed during an eclipse because you really want to experience that eclipse, but you, you'll photograph before and after and, you know, uh, kind of reaction, I guess. Uh, uh, I mean, Michael <laughs> Zeiler was talking about having like a GoPro running in the background so that you can absolutely. see it, right? Um, I did, uh, at the very first part of my program, I had a time lapse of us at the uh, uh, CTIO Observatory Chile, uh, you know, um, uh, I, I forget even what the acronym exactly stands for. <laughs> it's really, they have some really cool telescopes up there and we're up on a mountain, uh, beautiful, beautiful viewing and all the rest of it. Um, uh, and it's an NOAO observatory site. Um, so I just let that camera run because uh, I knew that my job was going to have to be focused on the, the live feed that was coming out of the, the, the scopes and all the rest of it. And I basically, for myself, I missed that eclipse. I was right there, okay, but I didn't get to watch the whole thing, you know. Uh, and there was a lot of anxiety. There was a lot of... Uh, uh, not only from the produ production cr crew and the live feed uh, guys that had the uh, satellite uh, truck and all of that stuff. So it was, um, I can't say that, I mean, it was amazing, but it probably was not this, ama this kind of, uh, uh, this, I, I'm just going to call it the ex eclipse, you know, experience. Um, you know, to kind of, I wasn't able to soak it in, you know, I wasn't able to soak it in. Right. I was happy that we'd got our data, you know, and that was it. But uh, um, there were so many other people there that were just talking about how amazing this moment was, you know, that lasted not even a second long, you know, uh, features they could see, you know, the Bailey's beads, uh, you know, these kinds of things. Um, so, you know, I... I do the wisdom of your advice of don't take photos on your first time out is probably a very good one. Uh, Michael Zeiler, do you are you a photographer for these eclipses? Do you try to capture? Not really. Um, you know, um, I, I I prefer um, to automate my videography during the eclipse, like I mentioned. Start start something five minutes before. Ideally, place it on your group in the general direction of the eclipse. Okay. And uh, 
or, or, or you can have it facing your group. To be honest, your group is going to be more interesting on the video than the eclipse itself. Yeah, this whole spot in the sky. Yes, this is the right. <laughs> but, you know, to see your loved ones, their, their first reaction to seeing, you know, the, the most incredible, beautiful thing in, in the sky you'll ever see, that's priceless. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so that's what I focus on more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, you mentioned that your home is uh, uh, in the air, is yeah. it for the total eclipse or for both eclipses? Yeah. Well, no, no, just for the annular eclipse. Uh, oh, annual, in, okay. Yeah, I live in Santa Fe, New Mexico, which is uh, just okay. inside the path of the annular eclipse. I have the option to watch it from my patio at home, but I'm going to go to the mountains near my home because up there there's a spectacular view waiting for us and that is an extended show of bailey's feed so our strategy and and, and my friend michael and, and and some others will be with us uh is to go to the edge of the the path of annular eclipse where you can see you will see a much shorter duration of the of the ring of the annulus but you'll get an amazing light show of all the little mountains and valleys of the moon, creating this amazing crinkly light show. You have to see it. Right. Yeah. I, I was able. I've, I've certainly was, witnessed that from Mauna Kea, um, and uh, you know, to see to see professional astronomers just, you know, their jaws are just dropped, and they're just their their cameras are. They had they brought out cameras, okay, to yeah. take pictures of the sky, and they they didn't yeah. take one shot. Uh, they were just transfixed, you know. Uh, yeah. I could have easily gone up and taken their wallets, you know, but uh, uh, I wasn't even thinking of that at the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, just you know, the, the one thing that will happen to anyone uh, photographing the eclipse for the first time, it's happened to me, is yeah. getting to take the lens cap off. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, whatever you're using. So that that's a that's a question for you, uh, Michael Backich. Is um, when do you pull filters for if you're going to photograph the eclipse? As soon as somebody says diamond ring, pull your filters and start shooting or continue shooting. Um, yeah. I mean, somebody will will be looking at this guy through the uh, through their eclipse glasses. The sun will almost disappear at that point and and one large um well large one actual tiny part of the sun's uh disc will okay. be visible and it will but you'll you'll be able to see the corona as well so the corona is the ring and that brilliant last spot is the diamond so once that fades then bailey's beads appear they they fade and then you're in totality so as soon as somebody says diamond ring and somebody will scream it it's usually me <laughs> but <Right. laughs> you know, so as soon as, as soon as you hear that take your take your filters off of your eye of your telescope of your camera whatever binoculars okay and when do you put it back on uh after you see the second diamond ring you know okay. after that uh the sun is going to get bright really fast. Really so, fast. Here, here's a little tidbit of knowledge. <clears throat> so let's let's say you're looking at the sun just before totality. Ninety nine percent of the sun is covered by the moon. So only one percent of its surface is still visible to you. That one percent of its surface is ten thousand times brighter than the full moon. Uh, yeah. It's that one so percent. Yeah, so be careful. Be yeah. careful. You yeah, want to do this, um, you know, yeah. of course. I have seen 14 sets of diamond rings, and I can still see you fine, ma'am. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. <laughs> but, so it's not like a laser beam coming from the diamond ring uh, etching your eye or something. No. Okay. You be careful, and I have always been careful. But. Yeah. Uh, but the diamond ring and both diamond rings, both sets of Bailey's beads are just so spectacular. You don't want to miss them. Right. All right. Um, uh, so 
All right, you, let, let's talk about the, the best way to do this. It, would you guys recommend going out with an experienced group? Uh, do you recommend people to watch a bunch of YouTube videos on how to do it? Uh, what, what do you think is gonna give people the best experience? Just, let's just say no photography, they're just gonna do it visually, okay? What's gonna give them the best experience? Look up with a meteorologist. Um, it, you know, that usually the, the groups uh, that are tour groups, professional tour groups, okay. will have a meteorologist on board so that, you know, as Michael said, being, being fluid, being mobile is uh, really important. So they will set up usually uh, where the eclipse will be visible, you know, with, uh, sure. with all the weather considerations. So I, w I would say that would be an important consideration. I'm sure Michael can add to that. Yeah, I, I've seen 10 for, I, I have a 10 for 10 record in terms of seeing total solar eclipses. Wow. The tone, 10 that I've seen, um, four of them involved some, some degree of relocation from the original viewing site due to weather. Ah. Um, and, and a couple of them were real exciting chases to, <laughs> to find clear skies, but su succeeded both times in 1999 and Europe. I, I remember that. That was a dramatic flight to sunlight, but, but that worked. But the, the point is that if, if, if you really want to see nature's most spectacular sight, um, be prepared to be mobile and relocate and uh, study the weather like a hawk. Right, right. Yeah, also, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that think they need to have some exotic e equipment. Uh, uh, in 2017, there was uh, eclipse glasses kind of like sold out, you know. People think, oh, well, uh, you know, the eclipse is coming, they see something on the news, and they think they got a couple of weeks, okay, before yeah. the eclipse. I'll, I'll just run down to whatever, uh, or I'll order them online, uh, you know. 14 days in advance and you think that's enough time and that's not enough time. What's going no. on is that everybody's doing this all at the same time and people are buying uh, at such a rapid pace uh, that, um, that you're likely to run into a late delivery or into a scenario like the 2017 eclipse where virtually all of us sold out um, before, before the eclipse and then there were um, there were people that actually did a lot of price gouging on eclipse glasses. Um, you know, uh, there, I saw uh, the, the most extreme example that I saw was on eBay, <laughs> one of our pairs of eclipse glasses going for almost a thousand dollars. Okay. And that's just ridiculous. You know, it's, it is, uh, you know, these are eclipse glasses that sell for a couple of bucks. Okay. So a thousand dollars, and if you think that you have to have the eclipse glass, uh, well, you're wrong. Okay, it's nice to have the eclipse glass because it's safe and everything. But uh, uh, what, Michael? You're holding up the book again. What, what do you guys? What do you guys suggest? No, you don't have eclipse glasses. You don't have filters. What do you do? If you buy the field guide, you'll get two pairs of eclipse glasses. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, so Scott, what if you don't? What if you forget the field guide? Okay, yeah. and and you. Here's a really cool way to um, see the eclipse for a group of people, and that is, if you are next to a building or something with a flat okay. surface, take out a small mirror, and uh, position that mirror so the sunlight gets reflected on the oh, side wow. of that building. Okay. And if there's enough distance, fifty feet or so. Um, then you will see a beautiful crescent shape on on the wall of that building. I, oh, I, that's I, cool. Okay. I've seen that before at eclipses. It's very <laughs> effective. You can share it with a large group of people, and it's a great way to see the eclipse in progress. Just like a cosmetic mirror, like a yeah, just like a little you know pocket mirror. And, that, and you know, if you want to, if you want to um, make a nice circle, yeah. Uh, Rather than a, if, you have, if you have a square mirror, for example, make a nice circle out of cardboard and put that on top of the mirror. It'll give you a nice uh, a nice projection. Yeah. But remember, during totality, turn around and actually look at the sun. And look at it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, because it's going to disappear and you'll go, where, where is that? Where's my projection? And right. uh, 
That's right. All right. So, so uh, we've talked a lot about what it's like to actually, you know, stare at the eclipse itself uh, during totality. Of course, you cannot do this during annularity, right? I mean, there's still so much of the sun visible that yep. you're going to have to use eclipse glasses or use the mirror trick or a variety of other tricks. Um, you know, I, I, I often see photographs of, uh, of, you know, like a bunch of uh, crescent phases uh, from sunlight going through tree leaves or something. Or um, I brought a, uh, you know, a, a drainer colander, you know, for, to make a salad or something. And it has a bunch of holes in it. And you can hold that above white paper and you can see a bunch of patterns. Yeah. You know, somebody yeah, told me to take a view of an eclipse for the calendar. A series of holes in a pattern like that spell out, you know, for example, your child's name in the year. Or yeah, that's cool. Like that. You know, so, right? And you can photograph that. Go ahead, Michael. Yeah. Somebody told me I could uh, view an eclipse through a calendar. I tried it, but it strained my eyes. <laughs> Yeah, that, I did not know there were eclipse jokes. Now I know. Yeah, oh, big time. <laughs> I got a million of them, believe me. Uh, we will have to write them down. Um, uh, okay, so, all right. So one of the other things that, that, uh, that I noticed during an eclipse, uh, um, when I was at Mauna Kea, there were these little, <laughs> they looked like ladybugs. And there were a zillion of them that came out when the when the sun went to eclipse phase. Okay, so I know that the, that animals of, uh, certainly go like into this nocturnal uh, mode, but they kind of do it really rapidly. I mean, dogs, uh, you know, think it's nighttime. And birds think it's nighttime. Or getting to be nighttime and everything. It's an, it's amazing how quick. Let's say it's just a a uh, two-minute eclipse or something, or a one-minute eclipse, they will react to it that quickly, okay, which uh, uh, I think is really surprising. The horizon view uh, is also spectacular. Um, and so a lot of people spend the whole time, like, staring up at just the eclipse and miss all this other stuff. So... Uh, if you've if you've determined that you're not going to use a telescope, which will will distract you, okay, um, you know, what do you recommend as far as trying to to soak in all the rest of the experience? You know, are you looking for, you know, do you recommend that you stop looking at the eclipse and and turn around and see the the other the ambiance of of the event itself, or what works for me? Um, is to use binoculars for half the duration of totality because the view of the corona through binoculars is so exquisite. And yeah. you see amazing detail. And then the other half of the time to catch the wide angle view of, of the eclipse, you know, looking at the eclipse itself, just take a couple seconds to see if, if you can see some of the brighter planets, but don't spend very more than just a couple seconds to register that. Mm -hmm. um, but that it, you, you will you will certainly see the brighter planets and, and some of the brighter stars. That's worth just a quick look. Um, the, the amazing thing uh, that you'll see is a 360 degree sunset all around you. Right. And then it's going to evolve during the eclipse. One thing that will happen at the 2024 eclipse is that it will be considerably darker than the 2017 eclipse because of the simple hmm. fact that the path is wider. And so you're oh. if you're in the center, you're farther away from sunlight. So it will be darker in the center in 2024. Oh wow! So how much? What, what would you compare compare that with? Um, you about the same brightness as the full moon. Yeah. If you go outside on a full moon and look around, yeah, it's pretty much the same brightness as totality during an eclipse. I see. That's right. I see. 
Yeah. Except so, you have a 360 degree twilight all around you. So right. that's different. Right. You see more stars during full moon simply because, yeah. you know, the, the sky sure. just outside of the shadow, you know, is, uh, is still illuminated by sunlight. And, but, and your uh, eyes haven't dark adapted yet. It, right. and, and, and also, that's, that's right. Yeah. Going from full daylight to uh, this yeah. drop in brightness. It happens so suddenly. Um, I, I I know some people, and I tried this once, where you put an eye patch over one eye to dark adapt one eye for totality. Oh, um, I see. Yeah. Was it effective? I mean, for you? Uh, I tried it the first time, so um, it's hard to say. I know okay. people swear by it. Right. Some swear at it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and if you want to take it to, to an extreme, you could dark that both eyes and, and just have someone tell you when to. <laughs> yeah. Remove. And if you have bad friends and say, okay, take them off now, but it's after the eclipse. That, yeah. yeah. So, um, uh, Michael, uh, both of you guys are writers. Do you, do you write about your experience? Do you record it like a diary, like a journal type of thing, or? I, I have kept an observing journal since the 70s. So, you know, I, I will scribble a few notes down. Um, these days, I do it less. I mean, I, I used to be really fanatic about it, but uh, I don't do it so much these days. Mm -hmm. uh, still write quite a few stories for Astronomy Magazine about the eclipse. In fact, I, I just finished one and sent it off yesterday about okay. historical eclipses that will be in the uh, March 2023 issue. And, you know, we'll continue to do that through uh, the 2024 eclipse. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, we've been running for about an hour. There, uh, there is a lot more to talk about about eclipses. Um, uh, I would ask you, both of you have had much more experience with eclipses than I have. Uh, do you meet people that get like... They see an eclipse and they go, yeah, you know, that, that wasn't, that wasn't so hot. You know, the one in whatever, 2000, whatever yeah. it was, or yeah. 19, whatever it was. Yeah. Uh, do you ever find people that they just go, that, that, that eclipse sucked, you know? I've never met anybody that's seen totality. Right. If yeah, you, yeah. That's what I'm talking about, ask, totality. If you ask people, have you seen a total solar eclipse? And they say, well, I think so. They haven't. They haven't. That's true. That's true. All right. It's like asking, did you have a child? Well, I think I did, but, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because if you were there watching the birth happen, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, right. it's, it's life changing, you know, so, um, uh, okay. So, uh, you know, I am, uh, you know, I'm just going to hold, you know, wholeheartedly, um, uh, uh, plug uh, Great American Eclipse, their books. I'm, I, this is an atlas of solar eclipses. Michael Backich has got the, uh, uh, what is it field called? Guide. The Road Atlas or? The Field Guide. The Field, field guide. guide. Yeah. 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 So you can't have, you, you can't have enough information, okay, about an eclipse. Look, guys, people spend thousands, sometimes tens of thousands of dollars to go see an, a total eclipse of the sun. This is going to happen here in the United States. There's tons of highways. You guys can drive there, okay? Uh, you know, if you miss this, uh, I think you're kind of cheating yourself in uh, an amazing experience that you'll be talking about for the rest of your life. Um, uh, you know, there's uh, um, it. It if you go with friends, it is a bonding experience as well. You know, like a lot of times where you're with a group of people, maybe you don't know them real well, but you experience something like that together. And it's a bonding experience that's going to make you friends for life. You know, I, I still call people, uh, you know, from past eclipses and stuff like that. Uh, I always try to get to, uh, uh, you know, celestial events where I think it's going to be, you know, really intense. And uh, so... Uh, you know, it really does. It does connect you with people like almost nothing else. And it's, there's, it's going to be a, a massive impact in this country. I, I'll leave you with two simple facts. First fact is that within the path of totality, 
There's already 31 million people in the U.S. that live inside the path. That's mm. almost 10 percent of the population of the United States that is, is already in the path. The, the second fact is that um, over 50 percent of the U.S. population lives within 250 miles of the path of totality. So, so that's a you know, that's a relatively easy trip for many people. Yeah, that's right. So it, it it's going to be a massive on eclipse day. It's we we have three times the population in the eclipse path almost as we did in 2017. And it's close to the eastern seaboard, the major metropolitan areas from, you know, Boston, New York, Philly, D.C., yeah. all of that. That's close to the eclipse. 200 miles or so from the eclipse so it's going to be massive on eclipse and it's going to have an impact on this country i i believe i think so i think so what do you think michael backage i totally agree i think uh eclipse day you know um more than 10 million people saw the last eclipse yeah i think that number is going to swell dramatically for the 2024 total eclipse mm-hmm mm-hmm well, oh, great. Um, I think that uh, I think you're right. And we know that, um, you know, uh, we, we do uh, uh, create eclipse glasses. Uh, you know, we talked we talked a bit earlier about what to do if you don't have them. But I think that all of us that have been to eclipses are going to recommend that you do have uh, safe ISO tested um, uh, you know, or compliant uh, eclipse glasses to wear. Um, you know, I, I, if you can get to a group that's experienced, wow, that's going to make it better. Um, I do recommend uh, that you don't drive out to some remote area alone, okay? Uh, that's just not, you know, it's like uh, diving. Always go with the dive buddy, okay? Things can happen. Your battery can die. You can have a blowout. You can. There's lots of things that can go wrong with uh, your vehicle. Uh, uh, you know, uh, plan a contingency plan to move if you have to. Okay, um, if it's your first eclipse, um, watch it. You know, uh, and do what these guys do. You know, set up. A, uh, you know, maybe a time lapse or a GoPro or something like that where you can see what your friends are experiencing. Um, I love the idea about the, uh, uh, you know, having holes in a piece of paper that spells your child's name or something where you got little uh, partially, you know, especially if you guys aren't going to be around totality, uh, it would be, I mean, it's a shame if you don't go, but, um, uh, but you know, a lot of people will not be able to for various reasons, uh, um, you know, and um, you know, the annual lunar eclipse will be 2023. That is going to be an eclipse that you have to have safe solar protection the entire time, okay? Because it's not going to be completely covered up. Um, <laughs> Julian Roberts, who's watching on YouTube, says, don't accidentally put on your eclipse glasses while driving. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll better that. Okay, we had in 2017, we had a guy, uh, an a amateur astronomer who had one of our five inch apos. Okay, now I'm not going to really point him out if he's listening, he knows who he is. Okay, uh, but he calls customer service and asks if he can just wear his eclipse glasses and then look down into the eyepiece. Okay. And when I heard that, I ran, I ran outside, okay, and made this video, which has now been watched, I don't know how many times. <laughs> but I show you exactly what's going to happen to your eye, okay, if you, if you do that. Uh, you do need to have safe solar protection in front of any lens that's exposed out to uh, the sun and so in, and on a telescope it's going to go over the front of the telescope on binoculars it's going to go over the front of the binoculars if it's just your eyes it's going to go in front of your eyes uh, if you go to explorescientific.com uh, forward slash eclipse that video uh, we we collected it and put it on there 
Um, but uh, it will, uh, you can play it and watch what happens. But it, it will, like a laser, burn, you know, uh, right through the uh, filter material if you're projecting through the eyepiece. And um, uh, that would be your eye. So, you know, be careful in that respect. If you have any questions, you got tons of time right now, but get ready. Don't, don't wait, you know, a month or two before the eclipse to get ready. You know, get ready now. Uh, if you are bent on doing uh, photography, you can practice uh, doing filter pulls and, and these kinds of things. Um, but uh, you also have to learn how to polar align. Uh, you want to learn a technique of polar aligning quickly. You don't have to make a precision polar alignment. Um, you know, uh, you, you just need to uh, basically track the sun across the sky you can make small corrections along the way, um, but uh, um, but have fun, have fun because it is going to it's going to be life changing. Both both Michael and Michael here have been doing it uh, for decades. Okay, chasing eclipses and stuff, and it's not always inexpensive to do that. But they spend the money, they uh, take the time, and uh, and do all this because of how uh, profound uh, a total eclipse experience is. So I appreciate you guys coming on. If you guys want to say last words of, uh, of wisdom here before we sign off, uh, go ahead. We're all good. It's all good. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, thank you very much, uh, Michael Backich and Michael Zeiler. Uh, look for their books uh, from greatamericaneclipse.com and, um, you know, and do, what, uh, and do what our friend Jack Horkheimer would always say, keep looking up. But if you're looking up at the sun, use, use solar, <laughs> say solar protection. And um, thanks for tuning in. That was our first episode of Eclipse Experience, and we will have another episode next Wednesday, probably around the same time about 1 to 1.30. So uh, thanks a lot and, and take care. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, guys. Michael, you're still here with us. Uh, I'm going to play yeah. this. I'm going to play this animation here that you created. Okay. Are Maybe we still can... live? Yeah, we're still live. You can narrate this. Okay. All right. So uh, this is a video um, that I made um, for the 2017 eclipse. And um, uh, this shows the, the shadow of the moon racing across the country. At the top, you can see the speed of the shadow, the, the duration along the center line and so forth. A couple things I'll point out about what you're seeing here is normally uh, the moon's shadow is depicted, depicted as a smooth oval. Um, but in reality, because of the complex shape of the uh, mountains and, and uh, craters and valleys of the moon, uh, the shape that we actually get on Earth is, is actually a bit more complicated. And um, with a couple of people, uh, I, I made the first ever maps that fully reflected the complexity of, of the moon's topography. Um, mm. So that's what you're seeing here. Uh, these corrected um, figures of, of the moon's topography um, let us make very, very precise predictions about the, the duration of, of the eclipse. Um, the, the actual duration of the eclipse may vary by several seconds up, uh, due to the fact that the sun um, may appear a little earlier or a little later due to the ridges and, and complexity of the surface. Um, this, I, I, I'm, going, I'm in the process of producing a, a series of videos like this for the 2024 eclipse. So this is a preview of, of what you can expect to see on our website um, coming uh, in the coming months uh, before the eclipses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's fun. You're really going for the ride here. So uh, where are we now? We're I think Missouri. Missouri. Okay. 
Yeah, so we're probably a little more than halfway. This eclipse yeah. uh, in 2017 went from Oregon to South Carolina. Uh -huh. We just entered uh, Kentucky. Uh, we're going fast, too. I mean, the eclipse yeah, we're going is like 1,447 miles per hour. Yeah. Uh, an, an interesting fact is is that the moon's shadow is the slowest at the moment of longest eclipse. Okay. Um, and, and there's a geometric huh. reason for that, if, if mm -hmm. you think about it. Um, the, uh, the, the reason has to do with the angle that the moon's shadow hits upon the Earth. If, if, it, if it's pretty much a straight-on angle, if, if, the, if the sun is near the zenith, um, then the shadow doesn't move quite as fast um, as it does if, if you're near the sunset or sunrise line. So, so that's, these are some of the things that you see on this video. Right. Well, that's great. So, um, well, we look, we look forward to, um, here, let me get you on the screen here. Remove my spotlight here. There we go. And, and pin. There we go. Well, um, yeah, so I, I look forward to uh, uh, seeing that video. And, and um, uh, also, Michael, you guys do pretty much freely let people use resources for educational yeah. purposes, right? I mean, yes. if you're a teacher out there watching and stuff, well, what do you recommend to them to get from your website? Well, I, I would recommend them explore our website. If you're into social media, we actually post a lot of content on, on our social media on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and so forth. Um, we have just released a new app. Uh, it's an app that's directed towards the, the general public to, to answer basic questions of how do I view the eclipse, where do I go, and so forth. Mm -hmm. You'll find that app just by looking for Great American Eclipse on either the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. You'll find it there. It's a free app. You can download it. But for anyone, say, uh, Scott, you mentioned a, a teacher. Um, yeah. There, 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 there is a lot of content uh, on our website that um, people can freely use and share for educational purposes. Our, our mm -hmm. only real constraint is, um, you know, we, 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 we would need permission if you wanted to use our content in, in a, for any commercial reason. Right. Uh, so come talk to us about that. But otherwise, for sharing on social media, for sharing in your classroom or with your friends, um, it's there. Use it. Yeah, sure. Well, that's great. Okay, well, I think we will. I think well, we will. Scott, right. I, I, I'd like to close with one more word. Okay. And, and, and that's to um, honor and congratulate you on, on the amazing outreach that you do. Um, you and Explore Scientific are, are going <laughs> way beyond what other um, telescope manufacturers are doing in terms of outreach to groups of astronomers and, and the public, and, and that's very evident, and, and we salute you for that. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think I, I admire what you guys are doing greatly, and, um, uh, you know, I know that uh, millions are going to benefit from the information that you're giving out, so thank you. We'll be partners uh, for this eclipse. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Well, take care. You guys uh, watching out there, um, uh, thanks again. And we'll be back with more content uh, starting tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.